In the previous videos, we went over how to scan and clean this watercolor floral and how to vectorize it. And in this video, we're going to learn how to recolor that watercolor floral and create different colorways of it. We're going back to the TIFF file that we created in the part 1 video where we neatly removed the background of the artwork. So this artwork has a transparent background at this point. If you're planning on vectorizing your artwork and you want to have several different colorways, I suggest that first you clean the artwork in Photoshop, then next you make the colorways that you want while you're still in Photoshop, and after that, then you bring the different colorways into Illustrator for vectorization. In my experience, this is the best way to do it with this kind of artwork. So first I'm going to show you how to recolor your artwork in general in Photoshop on a single element, then on a more complex element with more varying colors, then on multiple random elements, and then we'll talk about recoloring an entire repeat in Photoshop for those of you who are doing that. So let's get started! I'm going to demonstrate this starting with this lone flower right here. Make sure you're on the layer of the artwork that you want to change. I always duplicate the layer that I'm changing so that I can always save the original colorway that I had. And in this case, I want the original colorway to be one of my final colorways too. So I'm definitely making sure to keep it on its own layer, as is, unchanged, and then I'll do my recoloring on my duplicated layer. To duplicate your layer, in the Layers panel, make sure that you're on the layer that you want to duplicate. Right click and select Duplicate Layer. Photoshop will name this duplicate layer with the same name, but it'll say Copy at the end. So I'll keep that name and I'll click OK. And a new duplicate layer comes up. So this layer and this layer have the same element now and I'm going to recolor the duplicate. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and that's going to pull up this dialog box here. So let me show you what you can do with this. There are three sliders you can use to make changes to the color of your artwork and a preview box down here. Keep the preview box checked so that you can see the changes that you're making as you're doing them. The main slider that you'll see is the hue. This changes the color family that your artwork is in. So the original artwork is in pink tones. If we move the slider over, you can see the artwork being changed into more peachy tones, then more yellow tones, then green, then a mintier green. And if we move the slider over the other way, we're going back through those colors, getting back to the original, and then in the other direction, the colors start going into lilacs, purples, blues, turk, and back to the minty green that was on the other end of the slider. So you see, that's how you can change the color family. Then, this middle slider here changes the saturation, which means the amount of intensity of color that the artwork has. Moving the slider this way gives you a higher saturation or a more intense level of color. And moving the slider in the other direction makes the artwork less saturated or makes it have less intense color. You see how when I move it all the way over here, it's basically black and white or grayscale. And this last slider here is lightness. This will make your artwork lighter when you move it this way and darker when you move it the other way. But I just want you to know that I rarely use this slider. I don't usually like the way that it lightens and darkens. I prefer to switch over to another dialog box when I want to do that, which is Image, Brightness, Contrast. Changing the brightness contrast gives a much better effect in my opinion, but it depends on your preference. So getting back to recoloring our watercolor, there's another option I want you to see in here. First, I want you to notice how this flower has several different colors in it. It's primarily pink, but you have your main pink, your very light pink, a fuchsia color, a flame red color, and a peachy color in here. It has a variety of colors in it. And when you change the hue to different colors, you see that it does keep that effect to a certain extent. See, in this more peachy colorway, you have multiple colors as well. But if you want to have a more monochromatic effect, you can go down here to Colorize and check that box. And you'll see that this creates a monochromatic effect in your colorization. So let's increase the saturation to see that a little bit better. And let's bring the hue back to a pink color similar to the original. And you see, this is like the original pink, but more monochrome. You don't have that contrasting flame red or the yellowy peachy tone in here. Instead, it's more like light pinks to dark pinks. And that effect will remain when you change this into other color families as well. So that's another color change option that you have if you like that effect. And there's a cool thing you can do up here too. And for that, I'm going to demonstrate on the flower bouquet. So let's duplicate that 
and recolor the copy. So here, the flowers and leaves are on one layer and are connected to each other. What if I wanted to change the color of the flowers, but I wanted to keep the leaves the same current color that they're in? And I don't want to take the time to separate the flowers and leaves from each other. Well, if you go up here, on this current setting, what this means is that the changes that you're making will apply to everything on that layer all at once. But if you use the drop-down menu, you'll see that there are other options. You have the option for these color changes that you're making to apply to only the red tones in the artwork, or only the yellow tones in the artwork, or only the green tones in the artwork, etc. When you choose any of these colors, the changes that you make will only apply to those colors within your artwork. So let's test this out. If I only want to change the color of the flowers but not the leaves, then I can choose red up here to only change the red tones. And let's see what Photoshop does when I do that. So I'm moving my hue slider and as you can see, only the flowers are changing colors, not the leaves. The leaves are remaining the same color. And if I wanted to change the leaf color but not the flowers, then I would choose green from the drop down menu and when I make my color changes, only the parts of the artwork with green in them will change. So in this case, only the leaves change. Now, you'll notice that most of the leaves changed color, but this one didn't, and neither did these brighter leaves right here. Why? Because Photoshop isn't reading them as green. It's probably reading them more as yellow since they're more yellowish in tone. So let's try changing the yellows from the drop-down menu and changing the color. And you see, now it changed those specific leaves. Yellows and greens can be similar to one another and so can reds and magentas. You see, if I try to change the flower color and I choose magenta from the drop-down menu, Photoshop is changing the color of the flowers, but in a more subtle way. And more so in specific parts of the flower where it's clearly reading magenta and not red. So that's another cool way you can change your watercolor print. Now, if your flowers and leaves were a similar color as one another to begin with, and you wanted to make the flowers into a really different color than the leaves, then in that case, you would have to separate the flowers and leaves onto different layers so that you could recolor them separately. And the way to do that would be to select around each flower neatly with the polygonal lasso tool and do Control C to copy and Control J to paste the flowers onto a new layer. And then you could recolor the flowers without affecting the color of the leaves. So what if you have multiple elements that you want to make into several colorways? How do you ensure that your color changes will be the same across all of the elements? Well, the best way would be to recolor them all at once. First, I'm going to show you how to do that on these random elements. And later, I'm going to explain how to do that if you're wanting to recolor an entire Photoshop repeat. There are some issues that might come up with that, but you'll need to watch this demonstration first in order to understand what those issues are and I'll explain the best way to deal with them. So let's start with recoloring the random elements first. So in the case of these elements here, let's say I wanna make a second colorway of all of these. First off, it's very important that all of your elements are spread out in this way with a decent amount of space in between each one and making sure that none of the elements overlap with one another. First, let's keep this file as is and it'll be our first colorway. Now, let's go to the top menu and click on Image Duplicate to make a duplicate file. So we'll change the name to say Colorway2 at the end and click OK. Now on this new file, we're going to merge the layers of all of the elements, but we're making sure to keep the transparent background. So we'll select the first layer with an element, hold Shift and select on the last layer with an element to select them all, right click and choose Merge Layers. Now that all the elements are merged, we can go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation to make the color changes that we want. So I'm going to change all of the reds in the artwork so that I can get a new color for my flowers. And I'm going to keep my leaves the same color. And then I'm going to pick green to recolor the leaves and yellow to recolor these other leaves. So once I'm satisfied with the color changes, now I have to get these elements back onto their own layers again so that we can move them around and create a repeat or to do whatever it is that we want to do with them later. So because we kept a transparent background and because we left all this empty space around each element, it's really easy to cut them out again and put them onto their own layer. You just have to take the polygonal lasso tool and just quickly and randomly click around the element that you want to copy. 
hit Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl J to paste the element onto its own layer. Do the same thing with all the other elements. And it shouldn't take you long to get each one on their own layer again. And now this layer that has all the elements merged together, you can just hide it because you're gonna need to use it later when you make your next colorway. Now make sure to save your final file as a TIFF and this is your second colorway. So now to make a third colorway, you'll follow a similar process. You'll go up to Image Duplicate to make another copy of this file. You'll make sure to type in colorway 3 at the end of the new file name and click OK. Now on this file, you'll want to get rid of the recolored elements from colorway 2. But make sure to keep the hidden layer that has all of the elements still merged together. You're going to use that in a minute. So once you drop the recolored elements into the trash bin, open up the eye of the hidden layer with the merged elements, and now you can do another recoloring. Let's do that real quick. Go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, go ahead and make your color changes to create your third colorway, and when you're satisfied with your color changes, use the polygonal lasso tool to just quickly select each element and copy and paste each one onto its own layer. Make sure to save your colorway 3 file at the end as a TIFF, and now you have three files with three different colorways. Cool, right? And if you're planning on taking your artwork into Illustrator for vectorizing, then you can go ahead and do that now. But now I'm going to address those of you who are creating repeats in Photoshop. But real quick, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. So for those of you who are creating a repeat in Photoshop, after you clean your initial artwork, after the background is neatly removed, you may want to arrange your elements into your repeat first and then recolor the entire repeat after. But I do have to warn you of some issues. I wanted you to see the process I just went through for recoloring multiple random elements so that you could see that it involved merging all the elements and then recoloring everything at once. So if you choose to arrange a repeat first, it's going to involve then merging the elements of your repeat in order to recolor the repeat all at once. Now, this is a good strategy if your repeat elements are pretty separate from one another. Because later on, if you want to rearrange the elements of your repeat, you can still easily select over each element and copy and paste it onto its own separate layer, like we just did with the random elements, and then move them around. But if you have a repeat where you're overlapping certain elements, once you merge them in order to recolor everything at the same time, you're not going to be able to easily separate them. Actually, certain parts of your artwork are going to be lost if they've been merged with other elements that were overlapping them. So if you have an overlapping repeat like this and you want to make different colorways of it, I suggest that first you really make sure you're happy with the arrangement before you merge the parts in order to recolor them. And second, always, always keep an unmerged version of your repeat and all your elements. Make sure that it's clearly titled as unmerged, so that way you know that you can always go into this file to grab certain elements that you may have lost parts of due to overlapping, and you can rearrange your repeat if you need to in the future. Now that's if you choose to use this first method. But actually, for those of you making Photoshop repeats, I would recommend that you use the second method of recoloring instead. This second method of recoloring multiple elements all at once doesn't involve merging layers. So let's start. After you've cleaned up your elements and arranged your entire repeat in Photoshop, name the file with the words colorway1 at the end and save it. Then to make our second colorway, we'll go to the top menu to Image, Duplicate, to duplicate the file, and then make sure to type the words colorway2 at the end and save this new file. So in this new colorway2 file, we're going to use a recoloring option that's found within our layers panel. Go to the Layers panel and first select on the very top layer in your panel. Now go down to the bottom of the Layers panel, go to this icon here, and when you hover over it, it says Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer. So when we click on that, now we see all these options pop up. One of the options is Hue Saturation, so let's click on that. When we do, we'll see a new layer pop up on the top that says Hue Saturation, and also a box here that looks pretty much just like the hue saturation box that we pulled up before from the top menu. This dialog box will work 
almost the same as the other hue saturation box that we used before. But because it's on an adjustment layer, the changes that we make will apply to any and all layers that are below this adjustment layer all at the same time. So let's test it out. You'll see that here we can change the hue or color family like we did before. You can change the saturation and the lightness. You can colorize to make a more monochromatic effect. Or you can use the options from the drop down menu to target only the reds in the print, or only the greens, or only the yellows, etc. Once you're done with your color changes, you can just X out of the box and move on to do whatever else you want to do with your elements. And you can always come back to that menu to make additional adjustments by just double clicking back on this box in the adjustment layer and making your changes. Once all your changes are done, save your colorway 2 file again, and then go to image, duplicate to create another file, which you'll title colorway 3. Now this file already has a hue saturation adjustment layer, but I like to get rid of that one and start with a new one. So go down here, select create new fill or adjustment layer, and you can go ahead and make whatever changes you want to create your third colorway. Once that's done, just save your final file and voila, you've got three colorways of your print using the second method. Now something that you need to know about this method is that it's not a permanent change like it was on the top menu hue saturation menu. The changes that you make with the adjustment layer hue saturation only exist on that adjustment layer and only give the appearance of a change to your other layers. If you turn off the eye of the adjustment layer, you'll see that the other layers actually remain as they were originally. Now this method is a great method to change multiple layers at once. But since it doesn't function in a permanent way, one issue that you might run into with this is that if you want to copy and paste any of your elements onto a separate file, when you do that, only the original element will be pasted onto the new file, not including the changes made in the adjustment layer. Also, if you're bringing your artwork into Illustrator for vectorization, your TIFF file will not work the way you need it to when you have an adjustment layer. I do not recommend using this method if you're planning on bringing your artwork into Illustrator for vectorizing, but I do highly recommend this method for those of you who are only using your elements in Photoshop and especially for those of you who are making a repeat in Photoshop. So I hope you like this tutorial and if you want to keep learning how to make prints like a pro, then check out the rest of my print pattern playlist. See you there!